Hello, uh, my name is Yuri Suzuki. Um, actually, um, I actually haven't met like, Alex and when he arrived, uh, but I've seen his like, great achievement for the curation, so I'm a great honor to be here. Um, basically, um, I'm working as like, more about between sound installation or product design, and I would like to talk about my practice a little bit. Is it 40 minutes for the talk? Okay, so I have to set the alarm. Um, because I tr always talk too much, um, so uh, 40 minutes. Okay, start. Okay, so basically, main ma main material for like expression or like my main practice is sound and music. So this um, interest, like this material, came from my background. So I used to work a uh, Japanese artist called Meiwa Denki, and they're quite amazing mechanical musical, I don't know, kinetic artist, and they do performance as well. And then uh, after working for like, the artist, um, I became DJ, and I moved to Berlin. And uh, actually, to be honest, I wasn't a very really successful DJ at that time. I did a couple of music, and at that time, it's quite bad moment, because I usually produce quite Dancy or quite hard techno music, but that time in Berlin, it's like more into very sophisticated, um, minimal music. That time, so people doesn't didn't like so much my music. Um, and after that, I moved to Royal College Bad and the design products and uh, like study product design supposed to be. But I'm coming across in like interaction design and uh, product design that time. So I'm just showing a couple of weeks, like uh, my graduation work. It's called Physical Value of Sound. This project came from like my background. Basically, I was DJ at that time. And then I just found this advertisement on tube called Keep Her Happy, store my old record to the storage. So basically, people um, tend to diminish like physical media these days. And then another like, thing happened to me is, um, I used to collect music as MP3 because it's impossible to bring my whole record collection, like almost 400 records in Japan. And when I moved to like uh, Europe, uh, it's impossible to bring like such like, a huge amount of records. So what I have done is like, to digitalize and put as MP3 and in small hard drive. And I used to have music like 471.17 gigabyte of music. And if you play like, uh, like 242 days nonstop. Um, but actually, I, I dropped this hard drive and I lost whole data. So that's actually came, uh, this project came out. So physical body of sound consists of four or five um, series of musical instruments and uh, some toys, and which is using methods of the record. So one project called Sound Chaser. So Sound Chaser is like this project. This yellow box actually record player and this black line made from record. And uh, so this yellow box has a stylus in the bottom and the motor and the top part is like a speaker. And uh, basically what I have done is a chop up record and connect to like skeletric tracks. So basically you can make a kind of physical sampling music out from that. So the reason why I made this project is that like, under 16 years old people, they never ever touch like record. So I really want to make an entrance people to like touch like a record. And I collaborated this hmm? sound, not sound coming. Is it possible to put sound on there? Sorry. For this project, I collaborated with this. Uh, it actually came from Israel, Yaroslav Benza, and he helped me to create this project. you can make physical sampling music at home this and another project <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> 
And um, it's one project called Prepare Turntable. So I'm, I'm actually like skipping this project, but you can basically can see the structure. Um, record player has got five different tone arms, and they're actually picking up a different moment from one record, and you can actively can play as musical instruments. But I'm just skipping this one quite long video. And then, and actually, this project is pretty much explaining about like this series it's called the digital and the analog. So actually, I only spent 30 minutes for this project, but um, basically, this is a compact disc and engraved engrave as a record. So you can play on the computer or like CD player, and in the same time, you can play on the record player. This is such a short project, but actually, uh, this is only one product I produce in real life. And I have a great conversation with Jeff Mills, and he's very, like, really, really famous techno DJ, and he's a really respectable DJ as well. And uh, he's always thinking about like music business. And these days, people never buy any record or like a CD or like, anymore because uh, people tend to download music from it as an MP3. And he really wanted to have some physical value onto like, his upcoming release like album. So I proposed this record, and uh, we produced 3,000 limited edition, and actually quite sold well. But unfortunately, like uh, German company already ha have got patent, so I couldn't really make profit from this. Um, okay, so I move on to the next project. It's called Amateur Music Production. So um, I have a great opportunity to like, collaborate with uh, uh, Jazzy Simo. He's a really respectable um, product designer based in Berlin. And uh, I became interested in like, creating his physical value sound. It's all about the playback of the physical media. But I became um, obsessed with creating or like, uh, storing like, uh, data into the physical media. And uh, Jazzy Simo always using like a uh, plastic material, like a very, very really low resolution. You can melt in 65 degree, and you can make a really like a rough sketch of the product. Like uh, he making uh, some chair or like some like architecture structure and so on. And very, really, very really strong material. And he invited me to uh, like participate in his exhibition and in Mudam in Luxembourg. So basically, his exhibition concept is like randomly, like designer and artist come to the space and uh, do some project. So I made a brief called uh, amateur music production. So basically, brief is uh, creating record uh, in the in the space, and uh, I invented three different punk band from Luxembourg, and directly cut into the record cutting machine. There's no digital involved, and they're making master disc and. Uh, like making like a mold from silicon, and uh, using his plastic material, like directly pour into the negative mold and stamping it and creating record like this, and uh, looks really distorted, um, but actually works. But sounds really distorted as well. So, uh, so this is sound from record. So in actually like just one day workshop, but I created 45 records in one night, and the actual recording process and also production and selling in the same space. So like this is one project. And after that, I'm really interested in creating some sort of media which can contain like a huge amount of data. So this like a, like a concept leading to the project called Sound of the Earth. 
So in the beginning, I was thinking what kind of media I could create in the physical media um, content a lot of like data. So for example, one idea is kind of making spheric record, like a really huge record, or like making big leave to little recorder. And, uh, but I'm really fascinating about this like spheric shape. So I decided to do this project. But I, I approached a couple of like, museums and the galleries to develop this idea, but unfortunately I didn't get any grant for this project and I decided to develop myself. So in the beginning I had to like use some material like a spheric, like a vinyl globe and uh, put it into the structure and this is a master disc. Actually we did lacquer paint on the surface and making master disc. So this project is actually really, really taking a lot of time to create uh, because uh, we had to figure out how to make production and so on. And we had to get the cutting machine and the playback machine as well. So this is a playback machine. But uh, do you understand the principle? Like this is spheric record and the spiral record from like a uh, groove is this kind of spiral from like a north pole, like a top to end. And uh, so this is a cutting machine. And then um, this project, in fact, took five years, quite a long time, and really frustrated because uh, it's so many technical difficulty we had to like, uh, develop from scratch. But in the same time, it's allowed allow me to give like thinking about sound content for this project. And uh, luckily, uh, like when I graduated from Royal College 2008, and in the five years, I have so many uh, projects outside of like UK or like around the world. And this is actually my passport, and there's so many stamps, and uh, actually quite suspicious passport, and uh, it's almost like a double page. So yeah, actually the UK immigration control stopped me 20 minutes all the time, and, but, but uh, quite nice to travel. But in the same time, I have an opportunity to collecting sound, like soundscape or like music, like all around, around the world. So I almost like visited 25 to 30 different countries. And uh, each time I bring like my iPhone or like some dictaphone and recording like significant moment of my trip, and also collecting local music. So, um, so basically, uh, this concept is came into. I thought it's going to be nice to combine this concept into this project. So, like this is the data, um, just like divided to its color into different countries. And uh, for example, Russia has got huge like amount of uh, space and it has got like more sound inside. So, if you can imagine like this attached to the globe and from top to end, like from South Pole to North Pole, and actually stylus traveling all the way from like North Pole to South Pole, and um, actually ocean doesn't have any sound. So each sound like stylus passing by the the country like playing bits of sound. So, so this is a project, like how it looks like in the end. So almost like you can have satimis, like you know, world trip, sound world trip, like from North Pole to the South Pole, and uh, this is a pickup, and with speaker, and you can see like a bit more detail as well. So like this is my friend, like uh, made a film for me. So it sounds very really skipping, because, uh, like initial geographical reading sound.
So it's surprising. It's quite musical. It's even random position of the ge geographic. But uh, yes, yeah, so this is basically sound came from this project. Okay, so I'm moving to like another topic called redesign soundscape. So this concept actually came up with uh, the conversation with like uh, uh, Professor Anthony Dan from the Design Interaction. Like when I graduate, like uh, when like about to graduation, like uh, I need to talk with him because I was really stuck in the idea for the graduation project. And uh, finally, I didn't do this project, but now I'm like uh, keep like developing this idea at the moment. So redesign soundscape is basically came out the concept of how. Um, like surroundings, not very really sound organized, or well, not very well designed. Um, for example, this one uh, you can find on the YouTube. And, uh, So this you can see on the YouTube called the most annoying clock, like uh, annoying alarm clock in the world. But actually, like, this is celebration of the day. Like you are starting the day, what kind of sound you want to have? And also, like uh, some company like Nokia, I really respect Nokia. Like they produce a really beautiful, simple interface. They have 25 years like a great history about developing mobile phones. But however, like, sound content is not really designed enough. It's same ringtone all the time. Here, like this kind of company identity, but in the same time, like need to be like reconstruct like all the time, like because it's always same melody, and so it doesn't really tweak even like uh, I don't know sound content enough. And also, like uh, I'm lucky living in London, and uh, London has like, so many bad um, sound designs. For example, this is Dockland Rail Service, and making like a most um, brutal um, like alarm sound, so you can hear sound. <laughs> So this sound is actually 2,200 hertz, like actually like really brutally by, uh, like vibrate your eardrum. It shouldn't use in public like uh, notation. Um, and also this one is came from this really nice concept in the in the rail line in Switzerland. Always have volume into the announcement volume, so you can actually control the amount. So it's redesign sound is more about kind of you know like the like design like surroundings like surrounding sound. And also like another topic is how you feel the noise and what's different between music and noise. So once like making all that to the noise, is people treat as music. So this is an IBM 1403 printer, and when the printing process making so much like a, a ambient sound. But uh, it's a really talented programmer making order into the printing process and making music from this. Also, another example we can see in Japan, it's like a special road construction, like a structure called the Melody Road. Actually, the road has got some like um, texture on top, and if you drive on the road, and actually vibration playing sound or music. Of course, in the product design field, some like uh, designer is considering about sound content. For example, this is a beautiful kettle designed by Richard Sapper for Alessi, and which has two whistles into the kettle, and when it's water boil, like, make a very really beautiful harmony. And I really inspired from this project and create co uh, mu uh, project called Musical Kettle. So this is basically a musical kettle. 
So basically, uh, when water is boiled, what kind of sound, what kind of celebration you want to have? And uh, actually, this kettle, which can play um, your favorite song when the uh, water is boiled. But this is a really prototype stage, like, sounds not really sophisticated. Also, um, like a design your doorbell. So this is part of this series. And actually, doorbell is quite an interesting element and using sound and telling about like your present customer or like, it's like your provocable, like, you know, strangers coming to your house and all about like, you know, like ringing sound and the behavior of the pushing sound as well. And some good example by Drug Design, and they produce a really beautiful and like wine, like wine glass like uh, doorbell. And also this is from Japan, so it has got really big structure, making really low and big sound. So what kind of um, like a doorbell you could attach to, like a, it's like based on your, your concept. <laughs> so I made like, uh, I do quite a lot of workshop, and uh, I have got the opportunity to do workshop in the YASPIS in Stockholm, and they invited me to conduct one um, like a design workshop. So I invited industrial designer and artist and musician like this only one day workshop in the morning, they're discussing about what kind of ideal sound you could create and with, uh, from the doorbell. And I created a kit, which actually you can physically can make like doorbell. So this one day project is like a result, it's not really uh, sophisticated enough, but still a nice project. So this is developed by artists, like basically breaking bread is a, a celebration with your friend. And this is my musicians, they want to have a different music tone all the time. This is I'm not sure um, exactly. And this is developed by us, far from like this concept, but uh, they want to see the behavior of people pushing the button. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, but this is just one workshop. But actually, uh, I have a great opportunity at the design interaction department. Actually, no ask me to conduct a project, and uh, now student making based on this concept, creating a new project. So I'm really looking forward to Thursday. Okay, and I move to the like, next topic. So how to make noise better. So it's really related to like, making order into the noise. I have a great commission from a headphone company called III in Denmark. They asked me to create some sort of machine which can uh, translate street noise into something pleasant sound. So this is a project I have done. So as you can see, like uh, uh, taxi has got so many speakers. So basically, like, it's all about like uh, around 100 speakers attached and making massive sound. But actually, structure is on top of the taxi has a really like uh, um, like a high high resolution, like nice like microphone and picking up street noise and a special program translate uh, street noise into something present music. So basically we like uh, running around London city last like London Design Week and uh, like, yeah, show this project. From Ashable, I'm Logan Tittle. How often do you try to drown out the noise of the city? Well, here's a commute that's all about translating that noise into something worth listening to. The Sound Taxi is a collaboration between artist Yuri Suzuki and headphone maker III. It started life as a standard London cab, but it's received quite the overhaul. Now it resembles something out of Pimp My Ride. The exterior of the Sound Taxi is covered in 67 different speakers, from little tweeters all the way up to enormous Indian horns that project their music for everyone to hear. But it's not as bad as you're thinking. Instead of adding to the cacophony of a downtown commute, a series of microphones Phones built into the taxi record the horns, revving motors and whirring bikes around it, and translate it into a serene ambient soundscape in real time. Inside the cab, too, are speakers and headphones, so you can take in the music. It sounds like a pretty relaxing way to spend a commute. So this is actually sound came from taxi. The project was a promotion by III for a new line of headphones, and sadly, it's now ended. But the cab isn't turning off the sound just yet. Suzuki wants to do a live show out of the back, where the cab itself will add to the music. For Mashable, I'm Logan Tittle. This is a 
some video from like the last London Design Week. And uh, the sound is like analyzed as frequency and translating the different parts of music like bass and drum and melody. And uh, also rather like the uh, to next topic. So uh, probably like, uh, you notice I'm not good at speaking English so much and uh, I'm actually dyslexic. I'm, I'm living in London like since 2004 but my English not really improved because of this matter. And um, I used to play trombone and uh, I really really like music and passionate to play musical instruments and making music and then um, I used to professional band in Japan and actually I got fired because I couldn't read the musical score. It's quite sad. Um, so like trombone is very physical musical instrument. It's not about, po it's all about like position from like a, your arm and playing musical, um, you know, musical note. So this is like a standard trombone like a musical score and for me it's impossible to understand what how like music notation like, like how like music works and what note and rhythm is really difficult to understand. And what I have done is always like repre replace with number and like learning as physically. So that's my process to like learning trombone. Then like I was dreaming to like creating a new like a new musical notation. So one project called Color Chaser. So I found this really nice musical notation like developed by like uh, Toru Takemitsu and the uh, Japanese great composer. He often collaborated with uh, Bruno Munari and he always thinking about kind of what kind of composition could make in the visually. And of course this is from Mondrian and it's kind of Broadway Bugiwigi. It's all about music, uh, like, okay, sound element, sound component and rhythm as represent as composition of the color and uh, yeah, component, uh, layout. So what I have done in the beginning is so replacing like sound. Um, so how people imagining sound. So like of course like people like uh, thinking about higher like sound as da like a brighter color and the lower sound as like darker darker color. And the music always has got duration time in the each note and also like a gap between like a, in the note. So that's basically like uh, making music. So I made like one structure and called the color chaser. Actually, this is like white car. It's following black line, and then actually this black line is um, it's length of the songs, and then uh, it's actually interrupted with color. It's actually reading color and playing um, like music. Yeah, actually, I always use this shape. I really like this button. It actually came from like, your accessory for volume. <laughs> so I always use this switch. So basically, kind of like interface color, you are drawing processes, actually, like, uh, like composing music. And this like, content is quite accessible to any age. Like, even children understand how to use, like, you know, how to compose music and making like huge like, like a drawing in the end. And I recently have got show in the Mudam in Luxembourg. Um, I, I want to show like, uh, I hope I have got the Vmail account. Um, looks like music. So this is a very really nice commission from Mudam in Luxembourg. They asked me to conduct a like, show. It's a kind of one-man show about like developing some something. And then, hang on. So this is like a basic structure and uh, people like randomly come and try to different uh, color chasers and you can compose different part of music. Oops. So this is melody car. Just skip this 
one and then move to the next one. And then I'm just skip this one, it's not so much time left. Um, okay, so I'm like, moving on to the like, next topic called relation with sound. Actually, sound has got the interesting properties all the time and very really affect to the, your emotion and sometimes uh, your behavior as well. So this is like a, a music from like uh, like first world uh, world war and from Hungary and called uh, Gloomy Sunday and by Damia. It's quite famous chanson singer song. This song and actually this song is causing like I think 15 people's suicide. Uh, of course, like this is really like a dark song. It's really using a lot of as well. And in fact, it's Hungarian government forbidden to broadcast this song on the radio because of that matter. And also, this is really interesting uh, things happening, quite similar things. It's called the Japan Rail Line Nakano Station. And actually, in Tokyo, uh, each station has got a defined train departure sound. And um, the, this like, station has got particularly has got highest suicide rate. And uh, actually, a like, survey was happening in, in, in 1999 or something. And then actually, one music college professor find out because of train departure sound giving people to pressure and using so much minor chord, and that's causing the suicide. So this used to be in Nakano Station. Then like, after this survey, actually like, this uh, Japan radar changed the like, train departure sound. Actually, uh, suicide rate was down. This is now. But this kind of phenomena is quite difficult to scientifically prove, but I'm really interested in like, fascinating about this like, effect. And also another project called Child Chira. Actually, why noise has got a lot of interesting properties. Like for example, have you tried like noise cancelling headphone? Actually using principle of Hawaii noise and uh, any actually like structure of the noise cancelling headphones, any like Hawaii noise is created in the same amount of level as like coming in and like, generating Hawaii noise and deleting sound. And also uh so this is Hawaii noise. And then this also has got really interesting properties. There, there she is, she's crying, but then... So actually you put the, uh, some keyword of the how to calm down baby and you can see millions of videos on the YouTube about the kind of many people, like many parents try to make Hawaii noise from daily object. And one project called like, Child Chira is a like, Hawaii noise trumpet. Basically this spheric uh, structure has got to translate to your, like uh, brewing into the, this structure and creating Hawaii noise and expand as uh, like this like, cone structure. So when the baby cried like, using this one, but it's still like, on the development. And the Hawaii noise machine, it's actually like, came from the directly like, deleting noise. I'm really fascinating about, uh, actually I have got a great opportunity in the um, artist in residence in New Delhi in 2009, and I stayed for like two months, or like a month and a half approximately, and they asked me to create some sort of work in there. And then, actually, India is the only place I couldn't really stand anymore with street noise because I really, really like street noise and because I came from Tokyo and I really like noisy place all the time. But in New Delhi is the like only place like I couldn't stand anymore, like people shouting and also like so many like noise coming in. So I was dreaming to like, like making silent space in New Delhi. And uh, this really inspired me quite a lot, okay, this art of noise like by Luigi Lustro, and they, he treats like, noise as uh, music. And I tried to make something opposite, like this machine looks like noise machines, but uh, creating only Hawaii noise. So when any like, uh, noise coming into the, this structure, I'm creating the same amount of Hawaii noise reflecting and deleting sound, but it's not really
the end, it became like a children's toy. Um, okay, so this is sound project. Maybe I can introduce one more project based on another category called transparent box. So transparent box is uh, came from like my question of like things developing quite hard these days. And um, for example, iPhone and computer has got almost you can do anything. But in the same time, you can not really understand what's happening inside of the phone. So like this is like opposite part of black box. And I'm just skip this one. And this is a really good example is I have got a really good commission in the design museum last year and creating some sort of like a, a new way of the designing to telling people how electronics work. So it's like a printed circuit board is really um, efficient way to creating cheap product and uh, it's great structure. But in the same time, it like, looks really complicated, almost like it looks like a maze, and you never understand what's happening inside. So what if like, that replaced with something you're familiar with? And uh, I create this one. So basically, this radio, but actually replace a tune map. So you naturally understand that like, because you have experience to like, you know, taking public transportation every day. And for example, Piccadilly Circus to like, Southgate, how many registers you have and how many you know, like components you're passing on. And also like component position related to the city function. For example, this is the BBC and the tuner, and also like speaker corner is actually volume, and also like battery power station as a battery and so on. So it's, um, so like this like, naturally understand what's like electronics about. And also really nice coincidence, Harry Beck is a fast, uh, uh, tune map like uh, designer, he's actually came, he's actually used to electrician and he actually designed uh, the tune map from electronics diagram. So this is his like early sketch of the you know, normal transport. He still can put some like us in the bottom and something related to electronics. So he treat as a, like, you know, London city as like a bit more like circuit diagram. So, okay, uh, so maybe I had to stop talking now. It's, so thank you very much.